Drop down dew from above you heavens, and let the clouds rain down the just one. Let the earth be opened and bring forth a Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is being offered for your intentions. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our <coughs> hearts that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go do whatever you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pastor, pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old. Since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm response, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have chosen, I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your prosperity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, my the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, 
according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this was the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Good day, everyone. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Uh, <laughs> sister and I were talking as we were coming in. Uh, it seems like everything's rushed. And when you think about the fourth week of Advent, uh, it really is the fourth week of Advent only lasts one day. From Saturday at 4 o'clock to Sunday at 4 o'clock, which begins Christmas. And we celebrate the Christmas vigils. So there really is no... Uh, fourth week of Advent per se. It's, it's just um, one day, you know, and I, I, everything has been feeling rushed this, this season. Um, but Christ is still coming and we always have to remember that and the blessings that come with that. My friends, when I see, when I read this gospel, one of the beautiful paintings or the, the number <coughs> Of beautiful paintings of the Annunciation but the one I always think of is one by Fra Angelica and he actually painted the Annunciation a number of times he would be uh, you know asked to paint in different convents and monasteries and everything and he would go and do his beautiful paintings but his painting of the Annunciation if you want to look it up it truly is magnificent the painting of the Annunciation that is in on the walls of San Marco, St. Mark's convent in Florence is truly, truly beautiful in all its detail uh, that it gives. It's so rich in the detail of it. And there's a beautiful gesture that I wish to end with. But what we see in it is Mary in a house of the time. You know, he's, he's not doing it in a realistic sense of it's a house in Jerusalem, you know, uh, in the, you know, the, the first century in the early years. It, he's not doing that. He puts her in a house that's contemporary with his time in Italy. And we see her sitting there, and she's in this basically like a porch. Okay, she's on a porch. But she's really enthroned, and she's just sitting on a bench to show that simplicity. But she really is enthroned because all the... The garment she has, the beautiful blue and everything, are just kind of all around her and with her. And we see her there. 
and the angel is coming to her. And when we see the angel coming to her, you have the portico here, they're kind of in the center. And then on the other side is a tended garden, you know, a nice manicured lawn, flowers, a tended garden. And on the, and there's a wall that's there, a fence, a wooden fence. And on the other side of the fence is just these wild woods, this forest that's there. And it's absolutely, you know, it looks daunting. It looks like a wild forest, a dark forest. And what that's uh, hearkening back to is uh, creation. When God created from the chaos and you see this chaos of the wood and now with the coming of this beautiful message to Our Lady, this is the Annunciation of Christ's coming, that tendered garden on the other side of the fence shows that a new creation is occurring at this point, and Christ is coming. And then the neat thing is, when you look at the fence, you have this wooden fence, and each of the wooden slats that makes up the fence has three nails in it. Again, so you're already looking at the harbinger of what is to come, the sacrifice of Christ in the wood, on the wood of the cross. So you have these three nails in each of the fence posts. So it's really just absolutely beautiful in detail. But one of the things that gets you is the angel is coming to Mary, and the angel is um, standing there like this. But he's in an act of, you could tell he's getting down on one knee. He's He's genuflecting before Our Lady. And in the picture, she's actually a little higher than the angel is, okay, to show uh, her status, basically, is what, what's happening. And as he's going down on one knee, and he's looking at her, and he's going like this in this gesture. But the beautiful thing is, Our Lady is making this gesture as well, looking at the angel. And you would say, well, what's what's Point of the gesture. The gesture is, it's a way of showing receiving. And so that's the beautiful thing that you see in this painting that comes out. Our Lady in her fiat in saying, let it be done to me according to your will. She's receiving Christ. But the angel is kind of acting for all of us as, as he's there doing this as well and genuflecting, coming down to genuflect before her because he is receiving as well. We are all receiving the Savior. Through her, yes, we are receiving the Savior. And that's what we have to remember at this time. Christmas is coming. Really, it's not even right around the corner now. It's, you, could see, you could see it coming. Um, and with all the chaos that we got caught up in and everything, but we always have to remember this is a time we are receiving our loving Savior. So let us... You know, even if we had trouble during the Advent season of getting something together spiritually, I was just talking to Sister earlier, I, I admit that this was not the best Advent for me. I tried, it just it was very difficult, very rushed, uh, very busy, and insanely crazy Advent season. Um, but Christ is coming, and we are receiving a loving Savior. So let us try to take some time during this Christmas season to slow ourselves down and appreciate the great gift that is coming to us through this wonderful woman, our Blessed Lady, who says yes to God. God bless you. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she shall name him Emmanuel. With longing for the Lord and his coming at Christmas, we offer our prayers to the Eternal Father. For the church, that she may draw light and strength from the faith of Mary and Joseph, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For legislators and leaders of nations, that the Lord may guide their decisions in order to uphold the dignity of human life at every stage, from conception to natural death, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christian families, that they may bear witness to the hope that is born from the fruit of love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and the co consecrated life, that young men and women may generously respond to the invitation of Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the isolated, depressed, or forgotten, that the Lord may comfort them in their time of need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to welcome the presence of Jesus that comes to us through the motherhood of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for the men and women in our military and our first responders. May they come home safely and soon. And may those who have seen war or violence find peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And may those who are away from their family, especially from our military and our first responders during this Christmas season, be strengthened as they are away from their loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Eternal Father, you so loved the world that you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer. Grant that united with him in charity, we may love you with the love of the Holy Spirit. We ask this as we ask all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, to our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he fulfilled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice in the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and domains, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace Christ. Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel. The body of Christ. Amen. The 
blood of Christ. Amen. this time we offer our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And you have a blessed and Merry Christmas, everyone. We don't have a Christmas Mass. Again, this is the fourth week of Advent Mass. Uh, if you hopefully, you know, you can attend Mass at Christmas. Uh, but if you cannot, uh, I know most parishes are live streaming. And if you wish to follow ours, we're, we are live streaming on Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. So that's Sunday at 6 p.m. We will be live streaming <coughs> the Mass on Facebook under St. Martha Parish. Uh, Philadelphia and once that mass is over that's saved onto the uh, the Facebook page and you could watch it at any time either, either later that evening or during Christmas Day have a blessed and wonderful Christmas anyone everyone